Hello everybody, I'm Tyler Edlin. I'm back with the Brush House Theater. Today I have a special guest, uh, Bima. And he's going to be talking about a, a project, a personal project, right? That you recently completed called uh, Neuer van Java. Which is a complete art book, right? Yep, it's a complete art book. E-art book. Awesome, so why don't you introduce us to this world and how, how this all started? Okay, uh, so like Tyler said, my name is Bima. Uh, I'm an illustrator and concept artist, and I created this book called Noyo Fanjeva uh, like two weeks ago. I re released it, and now I'm going to be talking about the process while uh, when I was making this book. So uh, I make this book because, first of all, uh, the origin is when I was playing Fallout 4, and then you know, just uh, wasting your time and. <laughs> And walking around the uh, around the street of uh, the Boston city, and I feel like, hey, this world can can be happening. You know, I mean, the post-apocalyptic world can happen in real life uh, because you know, with fourteen around fourteen thousand nuclear heads in around the world, uh, maybe World World War Three can happen in the future. Maybe you know, and our world can be ended up in a post-apocalyptic place. And I think that theme of the near future that uh, make us human uh, be really in a, in a really, really bad situation is really interesting. Like, because you can relate. Like, I, I love Fallout 4 more than uh, Skyrim, for example, just because of the lore, not, uh, not about the game, but because of the lore, you know, uh, because I can relate to that. Uh, so I was like, what if I bring this theme to my uh, uh, into my local place, you know, in Bandung, uh, a, a city that I live in right now in Indonesia? So uh, I was like, uh, let let me do this, you know. So and you're taking time, all the immediate sources of inspiration, what what you're doing for recreation and your immediate surroundings. Yeah. So. Uh, I rarely see a post-apocalyptic theme, uh, a post-apocalyptic theme that sets in Indonesia. You know, I like never see it. Or maybe I, I I saw it like once, and that's it. You know, so uh, like all the post-apocalyptic theme and all the pop culture, like video games, all the so, all those sort of things that I saw are you know set in the uh, United States, right, or in uh, in Europe, for instance. So I was like, let let me do this, you know. So I take an environmental issues to the theme of the post-apocalyptic uh, that I want to bring in this book. And then in the exploration stage, I want to explore the color and mood. Uh, I I divided the places and the settings of of the book into like city or slums, maybe forest or mountain. This is a draft, so I could put like everything. Uh, that I want, but uh, it may or may not be in the book, uh, in the finished book. At this stage, idea of the uh, the length of the book or how many uh, pages would be in it? No, I have not. <laughs> I do not. I, I I didn't know that how many pages that it would be uh, in the book, but I just try to just you know uh, gather the ideas that I want to put. Uh, so you so, just yeah. started busting out ideas and concepts based off this outline. Yeah. All right. That's basically what I did. Uh, and at the word stage, I want to be, uh, you know, explore ex exploration of buildings, houses, roads, cities, maybe countryside, mm -hmm. and the characters. Maybe there are social groupings, uh, which ended up there is no social groupings concept in a book, uh, and faces and hair, clothing. And uh, when I want to finalize the concept stage, uh, there is a lot of uh, parts, uh, like uh, Dago, uh, it is like a part of in, in Bandung city, uh, and then Braga, uh, tall uh, hi highway street, and then university, and all sort of places. And the, the ones that I highlighted in greens are the ones that I think I want to prioritize. I see. So yeah. So in the world, uh, in the chapter of the world, I I will not. I divide it into like uh, some sort of prioritizing 
what places will I will I you know will I do basically at the time. So like in Dago, maybe I make like 10 concepts in Braga, maybe 10 concepts. So I can uh, do my best to bring some concepts, but also not too overwhelming. Basically, overwhelming overwhelming myself when I was doing it. Because How many time, total did you end up with for this? Just so we can. Do you have a number? Uh, I think it's around like two thousands, maybe. You did two thousand right? images for this? Yeah, that's insane. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Over how long? Uh, how how long from when you did the outline tool about you released it two weeks ago? How much time? Oh, I mean, uh, you mean this stage like uh, outlining and busting yeah for for creating all those concepts. How how long did the project last you? Oh, like a year or so. Yeah, that's a something. that's very productive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's weird. Though. That's insane. <laughs> that's that's really weird. Uh, so yeah, so this is like the outlining of the stuff, and then I also like write some sort of uh, some sort of backstories. So is this yeah. the bulk of the writing that you did before yeah. starting the um, before yep, starting your image? Right. I don't know if you had other word documents, or whatever, that you really got in there and fleshed out any kind of characters or lore. But this is kind of uh, where you kept it. Yeah, uh, there is actually a, a research paper that I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'll show you later, but this is like the first the first draft that I did for a book the first draft of concepts. Oh awesome So yeah, and also I I, uh, I I write down the color mood choices. I write down the key element uh, vandalism ghetto uh, vernacular font uh, and also a uh, waste and flood ivy all, all, all sort of things that uh, will support my my theme basically. No, this is very good. This is exactly what I teach my design students. You have a very clear outline that shows exactly what your your outcome, you know, is going to be oh, yeah. and you've thought of a lot of your parameters and therefore I would say that you know, it, this is what's good about this and this is a great example that I'll probably yeah. show my students is that it's it's <laughs> very uh, focused. Like when you were in that in that year creating all these things, you always knew probably exactly what you're going to work on how it was going to look what the tone of it was going to be and therefore you're just kind of creating the content right right and you you know why because i know that i only have like a year to do this so i know that i have to to you know to finish it in like one year you know i i cannot make it in two years how, uh, how come the year is it a timeline set up for yourself uh, yeah so i did this book because uh, so this book, I made this for my I made this book for my uh, final assignment for my art school, uh, art school basically. Wow! Did it yeah. did it blow everybody else's out of the water? <laughs> Were people uh, impressed? It's pretty good. I I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so. Uh, but yeah, I got a pretty nice uh, rating right there. So yeah, I think I I, I blow people off. So, uh, anyways. Uh, so that that's why I I have this, this super focused timeline and also super focused you know workflow because I want to I don't want to make uh, as much mistakes you know mm -hmm. as I can do at the time right so yeah so that's it and then I let's move on into so this is my like monthly list so you you did make an, a timeline wow yeah. Uh, I've deleted like some some of the schedule, some of the uh, bullet point uh, yeah. on 2017, but I haven't deleted my uh, 2018 uh, schedule. So in 2017, I focus on researching and exercising my, my skill, basically. Uh, let me show you my papers. Okay. Hold on a sec. I forgot to open it for you. Okay, so, okay. And as you know, when you want to make a final assignment, uh, in my country, you have to do papers, you know? So this is the papers and all the research that I did. Wow. Let me, words. Yeah. 
and I was just so lucky in this art school because I I was in uh, graphic design school, not mm-hmm. entertainment design school. There is no such thing at entertainment design school in my country. Yeah. So I was just so lucky that my teachers allowed me to do this. Otherwise, if I am in art center, maybe I will not be allowed. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not be allowed to do this. But well, they probably so, saw your passion for it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And luckily, my teachers love this stuff too. You know. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I just got very lucky. So this is like the papers. It's in uh, Indonesian language. So maybe uh, it's a little bit hard to read it. But this is basically. 87 pages of papers that I did. What what is it so, on? What 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 are you, what are you writing about in these in these papers? Oh, all right. So this is the chapter Oh, okay. Is this like in, the actual story or is it just research? Uh research, just research. So this is like the chapter 1 and in chapter 1 I told people the facts and the the scientific research behind uh the waste and also the flood that happened in Bandung and also in Indonesia. Uh, for instance, uh, yeah, let's let me see. For instance, uh, inc- uh, like this data set, uh, the productivity of waste in in Indonesia is really really high. You know, so maybe in a day, our city, uh, my city, could could produce like. Uh, several tons of of trashes in, mm-hmm. in streets maybe and that kind of thing so and also like the purpose of me making this book so why i made this book basically because i want to show like to show people a vision like if you don't don't uh if you still littering everywhere in in sewer in gutter that our city can can look like this, you know, because so that's to create how awareness. Feel. Yeah, awareness basically, it's because that's how I feel when I played Fallout Four. Mm-hmm. I feel like this world could be happen, and I want my feeling, uh, that feeling, to be uh, to be felt by people in Indonesia too. After I do this research, I know that uh, I will do like this part of city, like Dago and Braga. And then I go out, and then I took a lot of photos. Mm-hmm. That's step two, right? Uh, I took a lot of photos, so I, 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 I have a trip uh, around around my city, and just took a lot of photos of waste, of cities, of buildings, and that sort of things. So I could just use it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I like implore people to, you know, design your life. You know, you, you, you. You must be hearing that all the time, like design your life. But yeah, that's that's how I roll, you know. I design, I zoom out to my life, and then I put out. Okay, I have to finish this stuff on May or April, mm-hmm. and I just zoom it out, and then I work backwards. What stuff that I have to do? Yeah. Uh, and and I take risk, you know. I took a lot of risk, and if something doesn't go well, that's 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 normal, you know. Uh, like. Uh, not everything will will go as planned as you do in life. So mm-hmm. just move on. But like from this daily list, I have my focus sheet, right? So I can be focused all the time. So yeah. Uh, I think that's a huge so- part about it is maintaining and keeping focus so that when you do sit down to output yeah. some work, right. it, it's distractionless, right? You just like, this is what I have to do during this session. And then you just kind of execute and get it through. Yeah, you're right. And even though, even I made this, this all of this scheduling and all of this thing, uh, designing my life thing, I still got distracted, you know, by by YouTube, by Instagram, and all this. Yes, it happens, right? Because right now we are in uh, the most spoiled generation, and we have YouTube all the time, you know. So it is very hard, and this helps a lot for me. Uh, so. Yeah, design your life, and I schedule all the time of my life uh, right now on a daily basis. I use Excel. I didn't use uh, papers. Uh, I don't write it my schedule, but I just write it, type it down on my Excel. And let's go into the folder, uh, the project folder. Uh, 
let's see what we have here. So first I did color exploration, basically. Like this. Yeah, it does have a very Fallout feel to it. Yeah. A Fallout 4 color palette. Yeah, you're right. Fallout Part 3 was all green and brown. But this has got some yeah. nice color. <laughs> green and brown. Yeah, I hate that, you know. Oh my god. Like every, every game from like the 2003 to 2010, everything was just like green and brown. Oh, yeah, monochromatic. Well, I... Mucked out realism. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah. you did like lots of these little studies. Yeah, uh, it's pretty easy to do though. But uh, I just you know change the color balance and all sort of things and just compile it and look at what will works basically. You know. Mhm. Mm uh, awesome. Yeah. So these so are the first that, ones yeah. you did. Uh, yeah, that's that's the first one that I did for this book for the execution for this book. Uh, and then I also did this kind of stuff, like really, really rough and quick sketches that I would probably use in the future. And some of them, uh, I use some of them, finally. Yeah. Right, and th this is, is, would these sketch, uh, sketches basically just be for you, you know, really kind of quick and dirty? I, I don't know, I, just because you had so much work in the book, did did many of these like, end up getting into the the final book, or did you just build final images from these? Uh, so there is a chapter in the book called uh, Chapter Zero, right, for exploration, and I just put this on put these sketches out on that chapter, you know. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So yeah, rough sketches. And, and you didn't. I, and you mentioned to me earlier you didn't really do too much, too many environments at all before these. There is a moment. There's like a snap moment, you know, that turned mm -hmm. me around. That moment was in November 2016, when I was watching uh, a video released by art station called Meet the Artist Shadi Shafadi. When I when I saw that video. I was like really the same as him. Uh, he was an egomaniac person and I was too because I was the best in my high school in terms of academics and in terms of, you know, uh, drawing. I was like the best artist in my high school. Even in my first year of art school, I didn't even know like the difference, uh, the difference uh, graphic design and illustration and concept art. I didn't, I didn't even know like the difference. So when I, so I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. So from that video, I was like, I need to learn environment uh, art if I want to be a concept artist. And then from 4th January 2017, I just uh, busted my ass off to to paint every day, every hour from, from morning to night. And it was, it was profound. Anyways, uh, so let me walk through, walk you through this Braga chapter. So work chapter is like the first chapter that I did, the second chapter. Oh. The first one is the introduction, the introduction chapter, and then I move on into the second chapter, which is the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I made these sketches first, uh, like really, really rough, and you know, uh, really ugly-looking sketches. Mm -hmm. And because it is from like a real place, it is easier for me to to imagine. Uh, and yeah, because I have. The photos of it is really easy. Uh, let me open. Let me open this. Uh, this one. Uh, okay. So. so okay. There okay. we go. Step one. Here we go. Step one. I put uh, the the Google Google image on this slap to this uh, to this layer, and then I cut it all down. I cut to, to this, and then I cut it out to this, mm -hmm. and then the roads, uh, and then the background. The background is at, at the different photos. I got yeah. a really good photos here, and that I took myself, so I just put it out there. And, and then, the first thing that I do, the first thing that, that I did while working in photos that is, I just put it all out first. So I will not care about atmosphere or colors or values. I just put it out first. 
put out put out all the photos except the vegetation and the trashes. So here we go. Yeah. So this basically uh, the first the first image maybe like the first step mm -hmm. uh, while I working in photos. Blocking uh, it all it, out. Yeah, just put it all out first. You know, uh, the roads is also from a different part of photos. It is. Really so did nice. you? Were these photos at this stage already kind of color corrected so that they kind of no. matched? Uh, I think at this stage I have, but I didn't have like a, uh, you know, I didn't have. Maybe I just it merged the layers so I cannot put it like backwards on its its original state of colors. Yeah, I just no. I just like to to throw that out there. It's some people that try these techniques and they jump into it and they're not aware of how the subtlety in the colors you know, kind of really need to match with all the photos otherwise oh, yeah. it looks like a very disjointed scene but, you know, this yeah it, this is flowing pretty like nicely well. so yeah so after I put it all out then I have like some checklist that I have to make first is uh, the lighting yep yeah so uh, each photo have <clears throat> maybe a different lighting may different source different angles of source of light so i have to match it into what i want to do yeah that, that's exactly what and, i do yeah and secondly it is more like contrast right yeah uh, and lastly i would say uh maybe color and atmosphere and lastly atmosphere so this is uh the checklist that I have to do while working with photos. Mm -hmm. And after I did all of this, uh, then I bring out the vegetation, basically. Uh, let's bring out the green, the green color relation. Yeah, so you really have this overgrowing. Yeah. So I bring it all out and uh, basically put out all the small stuff, uh, not really the small stuff, but the the stuff that maybe put a lot of details into the pictures, like cars maybe, mm -hmm. and more vegetation, uh, more grasses, and atmosphere. And finally, I just uh, uh, adjusted the hue or saturation and the atmospheres. Awesome. That's really important for me. It's like a big uh, a big part for the finishing. Mm -hmm. There's a car over there, and for this, more atmospheres and rust because it's post apocalyptic theme. There's obviously rust uh, and colors. And for final touch, I, I, I usually put out, uh, pumped out the saturation for the uh, uh, nice touch. Point. Yeah. And then I add more smoke or fog on uh, on a background, basically. And then you know some birds for the background just to feel more more lively. Yeah, nice touch. Yeah, thanks, man. And finally, I usually put more adjustment, which is uh, hue and saturation. Oh, oh no, uh, yeah, hue and saturation. I adjust it all out. Uh, more saturation on the focal point and then less saturation around the pictures mm -hmm. uh, more bluish color maybe and yeah dark darken up like vignetting the pictures yeah darken up the edges and for, yeah this, helps that readability this is the sketch yeah I think that's the sketch this is the sketch yeah it looks and, like it <laughs> Yeah, nice sketch. and I explore like the main building, like uh -huh. the dock. Uh, after two these two sketches, then I move on to 3D. Yeah. This one. And then uh, I break it all up. For that. So you did, yeah, so some of these images, you did a lot of back end work to really kind of make sure that everything was in place. Yeah, so there's a lot of planning for sure.
All right, so yeah, you have the final image here. This looks great. You did a 3D base for this. You did some pre, some previs sketches on it. Yep. So from that 3D, I I cut it all out. So like this, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, let let me hide all of this adjustment layer first. So much uh, detail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So this is the the original render. Right? So you, yeah, you just go in and what like dump photos behind it, dump photos on top of it, match the lighting. Yep. Uh, same old, same old. I yep. just. Uh, all the photos, and I also rarely use, uh, you know, what is this blending layers? Yeah. So yeah, most so of I those just, are on a normal bl blending mode. Yeah, most of those are just in normal, and I just adjust it, adjust the color and saturation, and then yep. uh, yeah, all that stuff. Awesome. Because when you sometimes, you know, often I use blending modes, it looks like a sticker on top, you know. Yeah, it it can look. It, it will change your values structure too, yeah. depending on the, the mode. So it, yeah. it's very, definitely very situational based on whether or not it will actually help. Yeah. And, and, and the bad news is that we can't really control it really. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm more of, I'm, I'm more comfortable with just normal layers. Very cool. Uh, so this is like a waste. Uh, I put like a, a shape first, this kind of shapes. Yeah. Then I I also paint over it so it doesn't have too much details on photos. And yeah, this is like the paint over. This is the original photo. This is the original photo, and I I have paint, painted over it a little bit, and then I paint over it again. Well, thank you for uh, sharing that kind of uh, process with us. Yeah, no problem. What what did um you know, before we go today? Why don't you show everyone just some of the the props and the characters that you worked on for this? Uh... Oh, very cool. It's like the first thing, yeah, the first thing that I did. Well, these for the are great. Yeah. yeah, kind of quick sketches, and then I did the black and white first. Uh, let me see. Oh, this one. Oh, actually, no. Actually, I did this. This and also the uh, diseases that. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> that got deep fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Some Last of Us right there. Yep, you're right. Oh. Uh, exploration of the diseases and also the symptoms. Like the steps. Uh, Wow. Yeah, it's kind of the evolution of the diseases. I don't want what he has. Yeah, just to have like a general view of what these people will uh, will have in their bodies. Some people, some kids, and also more black and white uh, monochrome stuff, monochrome sketches, I would say. This is the color one. Uh, and then I made punks uh, inspired by uh, Mad Max, maybe. Mm -hmm. And also call out uh, what punks will look like in Indonesia. And the interesting part is there is a props chapter where I explore weapons, right? Uh, where, where, where I show like weapons. In, in the book, like this. Mm -hmm. And this weapon, I mean, this is the, the typical weapon that Indonesian will use in riots, in like oh big riots or, or, or bike gang. <laughs> this sounds like know? some of this hits close to home, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, and this is like a community in Indonesia that has this kind of stuff, uh, motorcycle, like bikes like this. It has a really interesting post-apocalyptic theme in wow. it. Like this is, like crazy man <laughs> i i never met like one of those people but it's just so crazy look at this crazy guy <laughs> <laughs> that that is something i would not see in my neighborhood wow yeah wouldn't right. know that exists <sighs> custom mopeds yep <laughs> really cool 
Yeah. So you took and, a yeah. lot of these, and you could. These are like really great inspiration. People just hodgepodge these vehicles up. Right. And I would never know that this thing exists if I didn't search and do some research. It's got on a it. lawn chair on that. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. A plastic chair. Like These what? people are pretty crafty to build all this stuff. Yeah, it's ghetto life. It's a real stock life, man. I guess so. Yeah. Wow. They did it to express themselves. There's, it is a community, and they did it to express themselves with this kind of modification on their vehicles. It's a quote-unquote art thing. Very neat. So how, and, uh, how many vehicle designs did you end up coming up with for the um, the, the book? Oh, uh, not not so much. Couple? Not many. Yeah, uh, I I think. Let me see. One. Oh, so this like, folder worth. Yeah, like eight maybe. And for this vehicle, I did this first. Mm -hmm. So I took I took a reference photos. Uh, let me see. And then work from the silhouette. Yeah, and then I fill it with black. And then I just uh, work with shapes only. Mm -hmm. And then I execute it. Like bring the real photos in. And then uh, paint and blend. And restyle. Oh, those heads. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This kind of heads. Uh, this drawings is not is made by my friends uh, uh -huh. but i color it by my junior uh actually. Ah, very cool yeah we do it on did you pencil. throughout the course of your project here did you go back and forth between the characters you know these vehicles environments or did you just kind of go through them all very segmentedly uh very segmentedly but in the end i think i go off charts like uh if if I've done the word chapter and then uh, the next month I I'm working on characters, but I still think there is like one painting that I could do for for uh, the environment, then I will do it. I, I will do it. Very nice. So it's it's kind of flexible, but it is more segmented. So it's ninety percent segmented and ten percent uh, flexible. Well. Um... It's getting late, so thank you for uh, coming on and showing everybody about your process and about your, your book. Now, what's your goal with this? Is that is to kind of just put it out there and maybe you can get some client work and stuff from that started? What what was the, is that, what's the next goal for all of this? Oh, the goal. Um, I think the first goal is to just show my friends and also Indonesian people that, hey, if you don't really, uh, uh, if you are not being nice with your environment, we can be in a bad place. And we are already in a bad place. Really? Yeah. So uh, I just want to give like a vision what it, what that world can be. Because my purpose as an artist and as, as a person is that I wanted to to explore. I wanted to challenge and unravel ideas and be uncharted so that people can be inspired and captivated and also motivated in what they do. And one of the things that I could do is I want I can capture a vision of a world that may or may, may not exist, you know, so that people can see it and be inspired by it, or maybe uh, just be happy, you know, just be motivated by it. Mm -hmm. So that's my purpose. I just wanted to show a vision. So that's why I just put it out, put the book for free. Uh, but also, I don't want really I don't want to devalue something you know because you know uh, something something that is free sometimes you know devaluate over time mm -hmm. so that's why i put it for free for just two weeks and maybe well if there is a job coming in from this book uh then that's great i think the jobs and the money that i get is not a purpose it is a result you know it is merely a, a result i think money and jobs is just a result from from what i do mm -hmm. and the reason i do it is the most important thing it is the purpose of my life it is why i get up every day you know i wanted to get up every day so yeah yeah you do it you got to do it for the love of it and the passion first and foremost yeah i mean let's say one guy have like 
180,000 uh, salary per year. And then another guy have only like 50,000 a year, but he's doing what we what he loves. And, you know, if you're doing what you love and then you are crafting it and then you do it in the right way and then you keep learning, you will be eventually have a market that maybe exceeds 180,000 per dollar. So mm -hmm. that's my that's my mission. Uh, I mean, my uh, that's how I roll. All right, I'll have a link in the description of the video so people can find their way to your to your store and uh, you know at least download that for those that are interested in everything. Yeah, thank you, man. Do you have an art station or anything else too? I can I can link. Oh yeah, uh, art station uh, Bima with pencil and also Instagram Bima with pencil. All right, so if you want to follow Bima here, I, all the links will be below. And uh, thank you for watching, and uh, thank you of course for coming on with me today. Thank you for inviting me, man. No problem. I, I really love your stuff, and then I, you know, just it's so it felt so surreal you invited me to, to the show. Well, I that's what this channel is about: is to continue to educate and inspire people, and of course, right. I love to show people's passion projects. You know, creatives like that's it's a lot of what this is about. Love it. Yeah. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.